This is something that I uh, kind of decided on as a method to take samples um, of radioactive iodine to testing for radioactive iodine and testing for uh, radon in beach sand. And the thing that I've been focused on this week is trying to answer the question, you know, uh, where is this substance now? Where are these radioactive particles? Uh, where can we find them in their highest concentrations? And what I've settled on is a boring device that's used for razor clam digging, and it basically takes a bore out of the sand, okay? And if you modify the... the <laughs> I don't, I don't dig for clams, so the, using these terms is new to me. So basically, you take this clam boring device, and you could put every two inches, you could, put, uh, you could drill holes into it, and I don't really have specifications on the size, what the size of the holes should be, so that's just kind of, you have to play that by ear. Um, I'm going to try to get this schematic to someone who's in the oceanography, uh, the Oregon coast, uh, or the people, that, the science you know, people that are into this to do this kind of thing, because if they don't have this and they're not taking these samples, they're not doing this study. Um, I'm sorry, but I'll do it myself. Okay, um, this device right here costs about fifty dollars. Um, I can go have this thing welded and made. I'm going to explain what this exactly does. It's a combination of taking bore samples for soil, uh, joined together with how you take a bore sample for a tree. Okay, so you're you're combining two uh, types of uh, studies here. Uh, are two types of uh, disciplines. And basically this uh, hand device, um, I'm going to zoom in on this. Once you get the bore or the sample, next thing you need to be able to do is to extract it. And this, these can be real tough because it's going to be a hollow tube. So you basically you want to have a steel rod and you can buy these at the hardware store. And then that will go inside as you can see, and it can push the sand sample out the hole, and I would put a hole in the top where the handle is, and that would allow you to take, uh, basically put this up on a hard surface, and you know you could keep a, a block of wood with you and have this sitting down so that you can extract the sample um, and have it go out of this hole and into like a Ziploc bag, okay? And that way you could... Uh, uh, extract the sample from the bore and this this uh, let me get back on out here yeah and the way you first get the sample you would want to take this you know you push this down into the sand and it's got to go a depth of 16 inches the holes are in intervals of two inches each and you would take this device push it into these holes and extract the sand and it's possible that if you put a hole on the other side, it may help uh, get the sample or may not. I'm, I'm, you know, this is try kind of a trial and error issue, and you probably have to do a little bit of experiment spending with it. Um, and again, I think it's important to put uh, a US, uh, use your GPS phone application of your Android or your iPhone to record exact longitude and latitude samples, because if you do get anything that's really, you know wacky uh someone can go go down there and do a double check um before i would before i do anything i, w I think it's important to con consult the uh fish and game or the whoever's in authority of the beaches uh and let them know you're going to do these samples a couple things to keep in mind if you do the samples way up where it's like dry you're going to get a more accurate reading because the only way that got wet is because the rain fell onto that and it's not very wet about six inches underneath that sand it gets pretty hard and therefore you may be able to get some high concentrations within the first four inches further up on the beach but as you go down to where it gets wetter it's possibility that that stuff is going to be leaching it's going to have leached all the way down through the 16 uh, inches and uh, so you know there might be a it might be a combination of uh, citizens working with the uh, EPA to go out and get samples on the beach. Uh, I mean, you may, it may take hundreds of people to get enough data to really determine uh, what has happened as far as the contaminants, and then you can have people in leadership uh, with uh, the National Guard in conjunction with um, the ocean oceanic. You know, I don't even know. I mean, I have to go look this stuff up. I like I said, I, I came up with the idea. I haven't gone out and contacted anyone yet. I just want to throw this out there. 
if anybody lives near a beach where they're concerned, you know, uh, you know, you you got one of these clam shovels, you happen to know how to drill some holes, you know, great. Once you get the samples, you have kind of two choices. You could take it to some research facility where they could do a spectrum analysis, or you could do a radon test. And if you go on my other video, it's called the radon sniffer. You basically get a radon uh, detector, and then you put the sample in the bag with the radon detector, and you have to kind of leave it in there for six hours to get a reading. It might get a reading right away. So these are uh, kind of do-it-yourself methods. And again, what I want to stress in this one is you, this is extremely highly – it's it's very highly scientific in that it requires that you follow a strict protocol because you can contaminate certain – things that you're doing and that's that's why it's important to have that gps location because if you do find something then you can have some expert go out and double check it and you want to have uh you know you know the first priority is to get someone out there who's an expert in doing this type of thing but if those guys don't really care and they think it's a joke i'm sorry but <laughs> i don't so um i i have no idea why those guys went to college to get their degrees and they've got these you know, multi-billion dollars institutions, and what are they doing? You know, what what in the heck did they go to school for if they're not out there taking research samples and being as thorough and meticulous as I am, sitting here knowing fully well that, that we're be, <laughs> you know, we had radioactive fallout come out in the rain, you know, and, and no one's, you know, where is everybody? Where is all these experts, you know? So it's just... Uh, I'm just putting this out there for anybody that can uh, run with it. You got a machine shop. You could do, you know, put this together in five minutes. You might have about five of these old clam diggers sitting around that you're not using. You know, it's uh, and like I said, you know, go 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 out and get get permission before you go out and start digging holes. And, it, and I don't think anybody would care as long as you know you you don't you don't take a lot of stuff away and you're just doing it for scientific research. And they they give you a permit. You might have to go check on that. You know, I don't want anybody getting out there getting in trouble and then. You know, people are out there looking for people doing this and trying to stop them. You know, uh, let's be smart. Let's not, uh, you know, upset things, uh, but somehow get samples or encourage people. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try to get this schematic. I'll send it off to, I think it's the Oregon uh, Oregon Coast Museum, or I don't know what it is. I, I still haven't even looked. I haven't even done a Google search for it, so I have to still go figure that out. But I'm giving you this. Someone else can run with it independently of what I'm doing. And thanks for watching.